So now that we are done with our game animation sample template, we're gonna migrate our animations over to the GASP ALS project that we downloaded from Polygon Hive's GitHub. When you right click to migrate your specific chooser, it'll select all the assets that are connected to it. And you want to migrate it into the plugins folder, then select the content of that plugins folder and click to apply to all and no to overriding files with the same names. Now we can close our game animation sample template and find our animations within our GASP ALS project. Now I'm sure every other project out there is going to have a different way of incorporating your weapons but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to be connecting our animations to the overlay interface of ALS. So to get started we want to find the overlay pose enum and open that and we want to add a new enumerator and call that daggers. Once we've added our new overlay we want to find our chooser table for our overlay poses and open that up also. In here we're going to add a row and select asset and then we're going to find out where our overlay poses are set up inside this project. Let's add a new folder for our daggers overlay poses and we're just going to go into our default overlays and duplicate them into our daggers folder. We're going to change the names to daggers. Once we've got these renamed we'll click on our data asset and we'll go back into our chooser and just load in our daggers data asset. Let's open up this data asset and just change the animation blueprint to our daggers animation blueprint and now we're just going to open up this struct overlay params pose because if you try to play it you're going to get hit with this blueprint compilation error um, and I'm not sure why this is happening but we just need to change this from overlay button base back to overlay button pose so if you type that in you can find that there and you just want an object reference so Let's select that and let's go back to this compile error and see what's actually happening in here. So if you try to compile this, it'll give you these errors and you just need to refresh the nodes, reconnect the nodes, and that should be sweet to go. Let's quickly go back and do this other one. So reconnect the nodes, refresh, and it should be able to compile just fine. So let's move on. If we now press the E key, we can see that we can scroll down to our daggers and that's not causing any compile errors and it's running smoothly. So now what we want to do is go into our post search dense database and just have a look at how this is using enums to change the animations. So if we go in here, you can see that there's a movement mode enum, a stance enum, a movement state enum, a gate enum. Also, if you have your own weapon booleans, you can add a column. But today we're going to just be adding to our stance enum and we're going to be adding a entry in there called daggers. So let's go and find that in our data folder. It's called eStance. And we're just going to open that up and add an enumerator called whatever you like. It could be combat mode, but for this tutorial we're just going to call it daggers to keep it succinct. And once we've done that we'll save it. We're going to head over to our blueprints folder and open up our animation blueprint for our character and our character blueprint. So once we've got those two open, we're going to add a variable to our character blueprint called stance. And the variable pin type is going to be eStance. We're just going to change that name back to stance instead of eStance and compile. So now we're going to chuck a little bit of code into this update overlay pose function inside of our character blueprint. So let's bring our overlay pose in. And we're pretty much going to attach this to a switch on enum overlay pose. And from there, we're going to reset our stances one setting the stance back to stand and one setting the stance to daggers. We're then going to connect our overlay poses like so, so that when we select daggers, we switch our stance to daggers. From there, we're just going to connect these two to a print string so we can confirm the actual stance that we have active. So let's get our stance and let's just connect that to the enumerator on our enum to string and then connect the return value to our print string. I'm going to press C and add a comment box just to keep track of which parts of the code that I've modified. So if we play that now and we go to our daggers, we can see up at the top left of the screen, it is now saying our stance. And when we switch to daggers, it says daggers. And when we switch to the rest, it says stand. Now, because we introduced this logic, it's going to break our crouching logic for now. So we're going to have to open our animation blueprint and our character blueprint and add a couple things to fix this. So in our animation blueprint, let's add a property access node. And in here, you want to scroll down and find your sandbox character 
and go through and find its stance variable. So after we've set our stance last frame variable, we want to drag off that and set our stance again and just feed our sandbox character stance variable into that. So I actually borrowed this little bit of code from zero to game dev. So if you're interested in more gasp tutorials, make sure you go and check out his channel. Now, if we jump back into our game, we'll see our crouch stance still isn't working. So that means we need to add some code into our character blueprint. So we're going to go into our graphs, into our event graph, and just scroll down to see where our crouch is being activated. Here, we're just going to set our stances again, set one to stand, set one to crouch. And on the uncrouch node, we're going to pull that off into standing. And on the crouch node, we're going to change that to set the stance to crouch. Now, if we compile and save our character blueprint and go back to our default level, play test it, we should be able to see that we can now crouch. So with that working, let's push forward with the daggers locomotion. If you go to your daggers overlay pose, you'll see that your character no longer has access to any of the other walking animations. And that's because all of our animation databases so far are activated by the stances stand and crouch. So essentially we're looking to add our own new databases in here and activate them with the stance daggers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the stand idles database and we're just going to duplicate this and choose a new nested chooser. We're going to call that new nested chooser daggers idle and we're going to see what's in here. At the moment, because it's a fresh chooser table, it's going to have nothing. So we're going to go through our stand idles and just copy paste what they have in there into our new daggers idles. From here, we can simply change our stand idles to our daggers stand idles that we migrated into the project earlier. And we're going to go back to the choose a table and just change the stance to daggers. Now once we're in the dagger stance it should activate our idle pose. And if you hold E, go down to daggers, you'll see that our idle pose is working. Now we just need to follow a similar process for the rest of our databases and seeing as though we've already made these databases, this should be quite a straightforward process. Let's log in our walk stops and our turn in places and go back and duplicate the stand walks. From here we're going to choose new nested chooser and we're going to change the name to dagger walks and we're also going to change the stance to daggers. Now inside of our stand walks we're going to copy and paste those into our dagger walks. Once we've done that we're just going to go through here and replace these with our dagger stand walks and our dagger stand walk loops, our pivots, our spin transitions. And once we've done that we should be able to save it, go back and give our project another play test and once we switch to our daggers stance we should see that our locomotive assets are in our project. Now I'm aware that there's a little bit of foot sliding I gotta be honest I haven't really figured out how to change character walk speeds inside of Gasp yet and how to do that non-destructively so if you do know how to change character speeds can you please let us know in the comments uh, otherwise I'll try and figure that out and update this tutorial series. Thanks a lot for watching and sticking around to the end. I know it was a lot of information to process and absorb within half an hour. I really appreciate your subscription to this YouTube channel and I am deeply grateful for all of those who are buying my animations and allowing me to keep pursuing this craft and developing more mocap. So much love to all of you, peace to your families and happy diving.